Yo, so it's been a little bit over a year since I bought my Model Y Performance. Now before my Model Y, I had a Model 3 for about two and a half years and then I traded it in and they gave me a lot of money and I ended up getting a Model Y. Let's begin with something very clear. I am not a car reviewer. I am a tech YouTuber. I review phones, tablets, TVs, all those things. I bought this car myself because I wanted a cool tech car. I wasn't thinking about the environment too much, although it is important to me. That wasn't my main reason of buying this car. I did a six months later video already on my channel. It did so well and people were asking me for an update. So here it is. I bought the Model Y because I wanted the best EV I could afford. And about a year ago, that was the best choice for me. And as I go through this video, you're gonna realize quickly, I'm not a Tesla fanboy. I just liked the car. But when it comes to like Elon Musk and all those things, I'm not gonna talk about that subject. This is specifically just about the car and not the company as a whole. This Model Y performance I purchased has a tow hitch and white seats. The total price was just under $63,000. During this time, the price has gone up to $71,000, but as of right now, it's just under $59,000. Now I'm sure by the time some of the people who are watching this video, the price is gonna be completely different. I apologize, but as of right now, in this very moment, this is the price, but I'm sure it would change. Now if you want the cheapest Model Y with black seats and white paint, it's just under $50,000 which in my opinion is not bad at all for a standard Model Y. You know, the price change doesn't bother me too much because I'm not in the market to sell my car anytime soon. Now, obviously, if I was looking to sell my car or looking to trade into a different car, maybe I'd care more, but as the price goes up and down, it's like a 401k for me. You know, I'm not tapping into it anytime soon, so I really don't care and really don't pay attention to it too much. But I understand if you're trying to time when to buy the vehicle, it does get a little bit tricky. Now in my six months later video, I talked about the quality control issues with the car and I'll talk about it a little bit here, but if you want to know more about that, definitely watch that video. Now I talked about the panel gaps and how, you know, I'm seeing more and more gaps or people call out the gaps when they see my vehicle. And that's one thing that is unacceptable for any vehicle, but especially a vehicle that is this expensive. Now, if you don't know, Tesla is actually instructing people that it's within spec and they're actually not addressing panel gap issues unless it's extreme panel gap. But I have a pretty large one right here and they're saying it's within spec. And also I had a bumper that was literally falling off my car and I was able to push it back in and it clipped back in, but I took it to them to look at it and they were telling me that keep an eye on it and if it falls out again, let us know. But I was really hoping that they can address that because your bumper shouldn't fall off when you hit a bump in the first place. And I'm not the only person that has had this issue. So let's talk about range a little bit here. That hasn't changed at all, one bit since my last video. I get roughly 280 miles with normal driving, non-winter driving conditions, mixed between freeway and regular roads. Now, if you're doing a cold start in the winter, you can expect around 170 miles. All modern Teslas now have a heat pump, which my Model 3 did not. The heat pump is like a refrigerator compressor. It moves heat from one spot to another. So if you precondition the battery, which means plug it in overnight, or supercharge it, that extra heat generated is being used to heat the cabin so there isn't any wasted heat. And this works great. I was getting around 205 miles of range when I was doing this, even in the winter. This is just my usage, and this can depend on how you drive and the conditions you are driving in like if you use more AC or heat. Also, I do drive the car like I should. It is a Tesla Model Y performance after all. Now, when it comes to charging at home, I am using a level two charger. I went with a NEMA plug, which you can find pretty cheap. Now, I did need to run a 220 to my panel, and I ran that from the basement. Now, the pricing on this determines how far of a run you need. If you have the panel in your garage and you wanna you know, set up the plug in your garage, it's gonna be cheap but mine came from the basement and it became a very expensive install pretty quickly. All in all, it was $1,200 to run the cord from the basement all the way up to the panel. Now, I'm sure if you really look into it through your electrical company, there's probably additional rebates that they can give you to, to soften this price a little bit, but this came out of pocket. Now, with my setup, I get 30 miles of range per hour of charge. You do need to use the mobile connector, which no longer comes with the Tesla anymore. Now, when I bought my car, it came with this mobile connector, but it didn't come with the NEMA plugs. So I was able to go to Tesla's website 
and buy the Nemo plugs. Now, as of today, this car does not come with mobile connector. That connector is an additional $230. And this charger is actually out of stock as of this video and people are selling this charger for a lot more money online. So it's one of those things that you need to be mindful of before setting up this charging system in your house. Now you can go with Tesla's plug, which is $425. And this gets you 36 miles per hour of charging. At the end of the day, using Tesla's official charger might be better for some people. A mobile charger is great if you're going over the road and you need to plug in at different locations. So having that does make a lot of sense if you do plan to charge your car at destination chargers. Now, if you wanna just plug it into a wall, you are going to get 30 miles of range overnight. So it's one of those things that I know people who do that and they struggle trying to just manage their car because you plug it in and it's just charging that much overnight. So I don't recommend doing that unless that is your only method. Now, I love the Tesla app. It is so useful and I've used other EVs and nothing else comes close to it. With the app, you can adjust climate control, heated cooling seats, charging information, schedule time to partner. You can even see when your car is on the map. You can see the status of your car, give access to your car remotely and do so much more. I love that I can honk my horn no matter where I'm at. Um, just because I look for my car in the airport very often and being able to flash my lights and honk my horn and not worry about distance or hold it under my chin and do all those things, I can do it wherever because the car does have a built-in 4G connection. Um, even if you're not paying for the internet, the car still has that connection so you can always do those specific things. And as a tech guy, those are the little things that I really enjoy about my car. I think one of the polarizing things is regarding the simplicity of the interior. There aren't many buttons in the car, it's just a very large screen and everything is on this display. So starting off with the vehicle, sometimes even turning on the windshield wipers or adjusting the temp can be very hard to use. Now with time and using it, you get used to it and you learn there's like little swipes and gestures you can do. Also Tesla did add the ability to add shortcuts to the bottom of the screen, which has made things a whole lot better, putting things down there that, that previously you need to go into menus to get. That right there has pretty much saved the interior for me. I do wish I could have done Android Auto or Apple CarPlay as the Tesla UI is okay. It, it does what I need it to do, but still I want to access some additional apps on there that I cannot access. If this is the first time like opening a Tesla door handle and you don't have a like mini tutorial, it is a very weird and frustrating experience people trying to just open the door to the car which is very frustrating for a lot of people. And also when it comes to like very cold weather and ice, those door handles can get stuck inside the car and getting into your car becomes really hard. You have to sort of chisel your way to get to the door handles to get into the car, which I've had to do a couple times this winter. Oh yeah, so let's talk about the white seats. A lot of people wanna talk about the white seats and I've had white seats in my Tesla for four years now, you know, a couple years with the three and a couple years with the Y and it's fine, it doesn't get super dirty, it can get a little dingy, but you wipe it up with a baby wipe and you're good to go. Um, you know, those white seats are just one of those things that looks really good, it's very aesthetically pleasing, but they're also functional too. I've done plenty of spills in them, and they're not leather, they're vegan leather, which actually means fancy rubber. So with fancy rubber, it cleans up without a problem. So that's a big talking point for a lot of people, but for me, it's just nothing. I do notice via Bluetooth, the audio isn't as good as it is within the app, and then also when you're doing a phone call and the microphone that the car uses is really tinny and people have told me they hate it. So a lot of times when I'm on a phone call, I just hold it up to my ear instead of using the in-car in Bluetooth. This is what the Bluetooth audio sounds like if you're in a phone call. Right now I'm going 30 miles per hour down the road and I'm just talking at a normal volume. So just let me know what you think. Is this good enough for you or do you expect something a little bit better out of this car? So let's talk about driving. This is where the car truly shines. As a joke, I tell people, if you don't wanna buy a Tesla, never drive one. This experience never gets old. Stepping to corners and feeling the G's pull you back into the apex and also having the flexibility of having a hatchback to put things in the back of my car like stroller or golf clubs or mulch from Home Depot. All those things, I can I can really utilize the hatch of my car and it becomes more than just a fun driving vehicle, which it definitely is. It becomes a very practical vehicle for me. And obviously you can fold the seats down and get even more room. And I've been able to haul some things that I didn't think I could do. You know, those Ikea runs can get a little, little dicey. I can always fit everything in the back of this vehicle. Now, when it comes to over the road charging, which is something I don't do much since I have nearly 300 miles of range day to day, 
I can easily find a charger. All the chargers are right on the display and if you route somewhere and you need to do charging, it would actually tell you how to get to the charger and it does a great job with range estimates and things like that. Now what I do find most helpful to help with range anxiety, when I'm driving the car, I actually use the graph and look at my actual driving and not the predictions of the vehicle. And I find that to be extremely precise based off my driving. And I can even see that my range is dropping down based off how I'm driving. So I can step off the accelerator a little bit and slow things down and I'll be able to get to my destination without a problem. So I have not upgraded to enhanced autopilot because for me at that price of $200 a month or $12,000, it's just not worth it. On my Model 3, I had it, it was only 2,500. For me, the free autopilot that comes with the car or enhanced autopilot, whatever they name it, with the car is just fine. With that being said, I have driven Super Cruise and Blue Cruise and, and from different manufacturers and, and I gotta be honest, Tesla is not as far ahead as the competition as they used to be. I drove a Super Cruise just recently and man, it was so good. And that came standard with the car. It wasn't something I had to buy. It was switching lanes. It was going to the freeway. It was doing all the things that I really need and also had auto park as well. So let's wrap things up here. 15,000 miles on my vehicle. How do I feel? I love driving the car. Never had a problem with the driving of the car, everything is great. It is just as fun as it was day one. I love when I get someone new in the vehicle and they're always surprised at how fast it is, how it moves and how it handles. All those things are great. Now, when it comes to things like the, the gap paneling issue and also when it comes to the charging infrastructure, it's great, but I think over time, Tesla is gonna start losing out a little bit because there's a huge push to get mobile infrastructure around the whole country. And also Tesla is opening up to other vehicles as well. And that's one of the main reasons people buy a Tesla. But at the end of the day, I am absolutely thrilled with the vehicle, but I will say when it comes down to me getting another electric vehicle, I am definitely gonna be looking at other manufacturers. I'm gonna be looking at Hyundai. I may even look at Kia. And I may even look at GM or even Dodge. Shoot, I, I wouldn't mind a uh, electric charger. But anyways, who knows what that looks like in the future. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching and thank you for joining me on my journey on one year and some change with the Tesla Model Y. Have yourself a wonderful day and take care.